Yo, 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 what's going on? Canal here, Bulls on Wall Street. Guys, uh, hopefully everybody's having a fantastic day. Dude, it was some wildness in the markets today. You know, we only ended up finishing down 0.34%, but the up and down and all of the action was just incredible. All of the action was incredible. You know, not only did we have, you know, a decent size kind of just like move down in some earnings plays pre-Fed, but then we had a huge pop and then a subsequent fade. And so it leaves pretty much everything on the table for tomorrow. So I got, <laughs> we got a lot to talk about. So today's video, I want to go over the market indexes. Uh, let's take a look at the QQQ, the SPY I'm going to give you some of my thoughts and then let's dig into the watch list because there are some decent names that are still popping up on earnings. Guys, don't sit there and just focus on NVIDIA and AMD and Tesla. You know, during earnings season, you have these kind of beautiful type of stocks that will have earnings and there'll be a surprise and they're coming out of right really, really clean bases. And you can build around these type of names. You know, they do a little bit less volume. They're maybe not as much talked about, but they're not small caps. Like, you know, you'll see stocks like Garmin and, right, PI and these kind of names like bust loose on earnings. And, you know, they're a little bit under talked about names. And so they can have these huge moves. But the other thing is, right, when they're coming out of consolidation spots, you end up with cleaner plays. And so just kind of keep that into mind. So, Today on the QQQ, it was a little bit of a nothing burger. You know, we popped down, then we popped up, and we kind of closed near lows. And so tomorrow, you know, everything is on the table. You know, my thinking is for a long time has been that we're just in a distribution market. And you can see by the volume patterns, right, that we have been having distribution. We can see when the market leaders are, right, slowly rolling over and doing really, really sharp percentage pullbacks. And that, you know, we're in a period of distribution doesn't mean the bull market is over. No, but we are entering this period of consolidation, a wild consolidation where it's not a buy and hold environment right now. You know, the the leaders are getting shot down slowly, but they're also building out bases. And so it's a healthy thing for maybe, you know, something post summer. And so these things take a little bit of time. I don't think that, you know, it's anything to worry about, but I don't think that the market is at a spot where it's just going to rip the all time highs. If that's what you're looking for right now, like if you look here, right, we broke in under these MAs, we pop back into the moving averages. Now we're drifting down. And so we are making some higher lows here, right? We got higher low, higher low, higher low, higher low. But we also could very well just kind of break this trend line here and kind of come down a little bit. And, you know, that could be in the cards. And you can see here, right, we're seeing distribution around, you know, across the board. And, you know, we don't have interest rate cuts on the table really for this year probably and so you know there's a lot of kind of cross currents that are happening and so it's nice to just digest this you know this move was primarily due to right ai and just coming out of a big bear market in 2022 and so now we're digesting that so let's take a look though because i like i said i think there are some really nice earnings plays both up and down and you can even see like after hours uh, there's a whole host of these bad boys i mean you know, you got freaking, this is from Trade Exchange. Uh, you know, they got FSO. Look at all these things here. You got FSOY, Fresh, Reli, Dash, Etsy, Z, eBay. And so you've got a whole host of these things that are going to be super nasty tomorrow. Like, look, 30% down gap, not much we can do about it. But this was, you know, one of the fun ones that we traded way back in the SPAC days, right? In the big bubble, the bubble of all bubbles. And so a lot of these stocks are getting shot down here. Dash, you know, obviously everybody knows DoorDash is a big turd. Like, it's a $51 billion company to do food delivery. Never really made any sense, Right. Now, this thing has got a date with the 200-day moving average probably tomorrow. So this is probably something we want to definitely right put on our watch list. Uh, you got Etsy, right? Down 11%. And you can see here, right, breaking down these lows. And so we've got a nice reaction on this. You know, if it breaks down below here, I mean, we're going to have ourselves probably a little bit of a pizza party, a QRVO, 
right? Similar deal. I'm not that familiar with this stock, but, uh, you know, it's got a not as good of a look as the other ones. Pay C. This one's got a big base that it's kind of creeping along. Like, if the liquidity is okay on this, like, I think this is something you got a nice, right, location on this for potential shorts. Uh, I think Zillow is going to be something that's in trouble, right? This real estate news of the commissions and all this shit is kind of wild. Like, it's, you know, it's got a little breakdown coming up here, and it's pretty liquid. Like, we could play with this one, too. There's a lot that's going to be going on tomorrow. Oh, eBay, right? You know, where you get the pirated DVDs. Now, this stock stinks to trade, so you can leave this one alone. And then, look, on the upside, we got some names, right? The old CVNA, the blast from the past. Dude, it's up 40%. You may get one last short squeeze out of this bad boy here. It feels like it's been burning shorts for just months and months and maybe even years. But it uh, looks like we're coming out. This is, like, very similar to Garbin, right? This company's trash. It's always been trash, but... Um, Price is price, right? Yay, man. Uh, uh, you know what? A couple, you, know, you have a couple beers and a lot of things start looking better, right? And CVNA is just one of those. It's an eight beer type of stock, you know? Once you get once you get one eyed, all of a sudden it's looking pretty good, right? And it's got a beautiful look. It's super liquid. So let's see. The gap is almost too big, right? Like, you know, this is not like some ten dollar biotech stock. It's gonna need the pull at the open, but the float is low enough where it can get really crazy. It's not a huge market cap company. So we do got some, you know, we do got some looks on these kind of things that I think are gonna be um I think we're going to be, you know, partying. Uh, and then on the other side, you know, there were some plays here that like TMDX, dude, this had an earnings breakout today. And dude, check this out, right? You get a week open on this. It's only 27 million share float. A week open on this one, dude. We can red to green this thing. Uh, ASPN just blew out on their earnings. Look at this bad boy, right? You know, you got Aspen Aerogels. Like that just sounds... Dude, that just sounds fancy, right? Like, you want to be a part of something that sounds like that, right? Like, Aspen Aerogels. That just sounds nice. Like, I want to be a part of this. Uh, pins, you know, had a, not a huge range on it, but it's very tradable. It was super liquid. I think this is a classic one, too, where, you know, it can get it can get a little juicy, juicy, a little juicy McGee if we can get this thing Dude, if we can get this thing, you know, breaking out over here, why not, right? So we got a couple of these bad boys that are going to be uh, picking up some steam. And, you know, old Qualcomm. Let's see if maybe we get a, a little action on this and kind of lifts up some of these semiconductors. They've been dogs, right, for a little bit of time. You got a 175 breakout on this one, a little magnet for tomorrow. So some good stuff. Now, on the other side, let's take a look at some of these big caps. So these are the earnings plays. Let's take a look at some of these big caps. You know, Tesla's had a nice orderly pullback today. I'm thinking if we get a decent-sized gap down on this tomorrow, we try to long it. I would love to get this at 175, 176. You know, even two, three buck gap down, let it spike up. We can level into it. You know, a little bounce off the 50-day moving average and this gap, you know, it, it's pretty orderly pullback, you know, on lighter volume than the mo up move. I think that one's looking pretty good. You know, I'm curious on this AMD. A gap down on this, I might actually think about, you know, potentially doing a long on this for just a quick flip. Uh, I'd only do it if we got close to the 200-day moon errors. If this thing gaps up and starts to actually fill the gap, I'd probably actually lean short on this one. You know, it's got it's still a big gelatinous turd. Oh, old NVIDIA here. This I got no read on. It's a hanging chad, meaning it's a daily trader. It's got a nice move, but it's a hanging chad where like, and it looks like a bear flag, but it keeps getting bought up. It's in no man's land. It's a scalpers only type of ticker right now. You know, you probably just want to leave it alone. But um, dudes, I mean, what can you do? Like it's. It's NVIDIA. We're going to probably trade it no matter what. Now, SMCI was also a dud today. You know, came and tested in the lower Bollinger Band and the 700. So, ended up popping up a little bit into the close. We'll see what's up on this one. You know, I think today was a good day to trade it because the liquidity was there. But, you know, it usually was significantly less. So, I'll probably leave this bad boy alone. Now, an interesting thing is, you know, Bitcoin has... 
broken under 60,000, but it's starting to become a rubber band long. See how we're outside the lower Bollinger band? You're down about 8% on the Beto. If this stretches down just to one more like flush down, you know, we have this big zone kind of support here. And I'll end up trying, you know, I'd probably actually do Beto or Ibit instead of Mara or, you know, CLSK, because those things are just turds. We want to probably be shorting those, you know, any chance we get. But they're just, they're weird locations, right? It's like they pop up, then they fade. They pop up, they fade. You know, you, there's really no rhyme or reason to them. So, like, what I want to focus on for tomorrow is these earnings plays. Guys, look at Estee Lauder. Like, you know, people discount these earnings plays, these gappers, because they're not famous, right? They're not the things that everybody talks about. But look at this thing. Like, this thing gaps down six bucks, and then it's just, boom, bleeds off. Another 14, all down to 90 in May. This is what we're looking for, right? You don't got to sit there and right, trade Microsoft and some bullshit uh, when it's just ranging. Like you have these kind of names that we can do. And, you know, that's what we're going to be focusing on, you know, tomorrow, right? So you got CVNA and TMDX and Aspen and Pins and Garmin for day two. You know, you got all these kind of names. And then on the downside, right, you know, we've got some day twos here that we can do on CVNX, or we get day one on DoorDash, Asbox, right? We've got these kind of names that are going to move irregardless to what's happening in the market, and that's where we got to be on these things. So, guys, let me know if you have any questions. I love you guys. Peace in the Middle East.